that our leader who left us long ago is back to our phone. First of all, we have fought so hard for the release of our leader, our political leader and father. The, the crowd is overwhelming. So we give thanks to God Almighty for his safe return home. And we pray that uh, all our faithful people, faithful, should be steadfast now that we have a pro pure political direction. Thanks for staying with us, everyone, on Politics Today. What does the future hold for Mr. James Onani February, uh, two-term governor of Delta State, Irish Delta State? Well, that man was convicted in the United Kingdom, but wasn't, uh, was never convicted here in Nigeria. And the question is, is a politician well respected in his home country, well received by his own people, but how does the legal community, of course, receive the coming back of this man? The political community, that's uh, another thing. The future for Mr. Ibori, who, in fact, when he was there in the UK, in the UK prison, a lot was said of how he made a lot of control in Nigeria's politics. Well, for a moment, let's take pause. Uh, let's go back to our first uh, earlier story about the Ondo crisis in the House of Assembly and how that has impacted on governors in the state. Enya Kinshala, Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Ondo State, Mr. Odisha Gomimiko, joins us on telephone. Many thanks, uh, Eni, for joining us on the program right now. Uh, it's a few days uh, before the end of uh, uh, the tenure of. Uh, hello. Go hello, uh, Mr. Akinshala. Many thanks for coming on the program. Uh, we understand that the governor uh, has not been able to present the 2017 budget. Uh, is there any hope uh, uh, that he will be able to do so any, any moment from now? Hello? Uh, we can hear you loud and clear, Mr. Akinshala. The governor has not been able to present the 2017 budget to the uh, House Hello? of Assembly. <laughs> oh, no. That is um, very frustrating, though. Let's leave that and let's uh, continue with our conversation with Mr. Kaede Ajula, who is in our Abuja studio talking about the Ibori return to Nigeria, the court cases, and the political future of that man. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Ajula. But at, as it stands now, let me quickly take your mind back to some of the issues that played out uh, when Mr. Ibori was uh, in the UK prison of how he, he still holds a lot of uh, prominence uh, in the political uh, scene in Delta State, now that he's back. In the Nigerian constitution, what does the future hold for Mr. Ibori if he's convicted, if, if he's convicted in Nigeria prison, I mean Nigerian court, uh, does he have a chance of contesting uh, in, uh, for any political office? Well, if we must look at it from going by our own law in Nigeria, as it is today, it's so certain that Ibori has been convicted and he's just finished serving his, oh, his jail term. And you know that for you to present yourself for any election in Nigeria, you must at least have 10 years within which you've not been convicted. So as it is now, by, by my calculation, for the next, that means that even if nobody convicts Ibori again, in the next Five to six years, Ibori cannot present himself to contest any election in Nigeria cities. And mind you, I didn't mean that this is the man that again even concealed his other conviction. Because if you remember that in 1992, Ibori was convicted in the United Kingdom. I didn't mean that Nigeria were aware of that. He is not supposed to even present himself as a governor. Even recently, I noticed that some people even wanted to approach the court to ask that the court should expunge. I don't know what, how, how they want to do that. All the times he spent as a, pre, as a governor because he got there through fraud. Because I think that the, the, the nation is aware of his first conviction. He is not supposed to even present himself. That is one. The secondly, as it is now, he has been convicted for the next 10, year, for the next 10 years, as it is, except we have, to, we have to check it maybe from the time of his conviction, which is some years back to now. He has at least six to four, five years that he will not present. Then apart from that, like what we mentioned earlier, 
There's all those pockets of allegation, charges, cases that Ibori is involved in that we believe, except it depends on what the, what the Nigerian government may do about it, that you know that if it's tried, it will go for it. And if I have my way, let us look at it. Though sometimes law and moral work together, it is not morally wise for a body to present himself for any election in Nigeria. Because this is a man who, who was even referred to as common thief. You know what it is. Anyway, that is what the law says, and that is what I believe we should follow. Uh, some, some of those are, are in the realm of speculations, of course, but if you look at it now, uh, it was tried, convicted in the UK, not in the Niger on the Nigerian soil, and uh, not by Nigerian law. Uh, does he still take away the fact that uh, in the face of the Nigerian law, Mr. Ibori is innocent? No, certainly, like what I mentioned, well, if you don't want one thing is this, most of our legal system we borrow from the United Kingdom. And when you check most of our criminal law, we make reference to the, 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 the law in the UK. And as it is, that's what is conviction in the UK has effect in Nigeria. So clear. And that's why I mentioned earlier. If you remember in 1992, Ibori was convicted twice in the United Kingdom. Had it been that such knowledge comes to Nigerian authority, as at that time he contested first in 1999, and he contested again in, 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 in 2003. I mean, at that notice, we got the notice. Ibori is not supposed to contest. And I'm sure, I mean, at that knowledge is there, some people must have gone to court to stop him. But uh, that one has gone. But now, his conviction is well known to the whole world. Mm -hmm. That conviction okay. affects uh, uh, whatever uh, that happened in Nigeria. You, 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 um, as, as that. You, 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 one you, you mentioned, the, sorry, if I may butt in, you, you mentioned about some, his record as a governor. Uh, does this conviction take, uh, re removes his record uh, of benefits that may uh, be accruable to him as a former governor of Delta State? Well, I want to believe that that one is subject to interpretation. But if we have to look at interpretation that it is now held that he presents itself through fraudulent way, because as at the time he became a governor, he is not supposed to be elected as a governor in, on the face of the law. Because if you are convicted, the next 10 years within which you, have con you are convicted, according to our law, you are not supposed to present yourself for any election. For doing that, I believe that he, he did that. And it, like I mentioned earlier, it's subject to interpretation. Okay. But uh, from, my own, from my own opinion, he is not even supposed to even be regarded as a governor of any state. Okay. Uh, uh, before I allow you to go, Mr. Ajula, uh, do tell us, uh, as it stands now, he's facing a confiscation trial which came after that conviction. As it stands now, uh, some of uh, the, the properties uh, that Mr. Bori has in the United Kingdom, if confiscated, if he loses that case in the United Kingdom, what is the possibility of a repatriation of uh, those uh, funds to Nigeria? Well, I want to say when it comes to the issue of repatriation, repatriation is not a waiting. It is expected that after the property has been confiscated, the, the, the re-owner of that property, which is the people of Desta State, led by the government of Desta State, supposed to make a request to ensure that the repartition of same. And that is how it's be, being done. And it's a, you shouldn't expect somebody like me to go to say this, my, it's my money. The owner of the money, and that is the government of Delta State, need to ask for the repatriation of the money and bring it back for the good of their people. Uh, Mr. Ajula, we must leave it at that. We'll see how that pans out. We understand that Mr. Ibori will return to the United Kingdom uh, at some point uh, in the coming days to face the confiscation trial, and we will be looking if the federal government will be reopening that case. Uh, that happens. We'll see how that, excuse me, that pans out. Many thanks, Mr. Kadi Ajula, uh, one who has been following that case uh, from the onset. That's how far we can go on the program. Many thanks for being part of it. On behalf of the team, I'm Sean Kimbali. Bye for now.